Hello, everybody, and welcome to Digital Woodcarver. My name is Lanny Shaughnessy, and I am looking forward to working with each and every one of you tonight. <laughs> oh, I had an intro all set up, and of course, when I hit start, the camera's on me. So I had to be my own intro. All right. How y'all doing tonight? Hope everybody's doing good. Let me close this intro page now that I don't need it. <laughs> Welcome, Mike and Dave and Dennis. Uh, looking forward to working with you as well, sir. Congratulations on your new digital wood cover. I know you just ordered and <clears throat> looking forward to getting it and all. Mr. Paul Handwork. <clears throat> Alfred Columbus. How you doing, buddy? Good evening, William. Dave, Mike, Troy, Troy's here, cool, cool, hello, Bob and Charles, well, it looks like we got a little crowd popping in tonight, that's good, <clears throat> glad you guys can join me, while we are getting started here, let me tell you a little bit about what we're doing tonight, you know, I figured uh, the, uh, with everything going on, uh, with the schools being closed, and with, uh, you know, some businesses being closed, and people being, you know, home, and stuff. It gives us a perfect opportunity to uh, do some things around the house, work on our CNC, work on our shops, and you know, get some stuff done and take our minds off of the day to day. Well, you know, we also got uh, you know, we probably have kids running around or grandkids running around or something like that. And I figured, why not look at a couple of CNC projects that uh, you know would be fun and easy for us to make uh, and enjoyable for the little ones to play with. And uh, we're going to look at uh, some different types of uh, concepts of puzzles and things and uh, different games we can look at and things. But we're mostly going to kind of focus on making puzzles and all. And I thought that that would be a good way to kind of uh, spend a few hours together this evening. Now, <clears throat> those of you may have uh, heard, uh, but uh, starting Wednesday night, April 1st, uh, tomorrow night at 7 p.m., be sure to join Burl Tishner, owner of Digital Woodcarver and I, as we take a walkthrough and a tour and demo of our DWC 2440 unit. Um, our DWC 2440 is our kind of our flagship unit. And we're going to be uh, demoing it, talking about it, uh, spending a little bit of time just kind of showing it off and all and some of the accessories, uh, going over those and answering some questions and everything. So 7 o'clock tomorrow. Same channel. No, I'm just kidding. It's going to be the Digital Wood Carver channel. Uh, and on Facebook, Digital Wood Carver page on Facebook, we'll be streaming live to Facebook as well. So without further ado, I am going to open up this can of soda, take a sip, and let's jump over to the Vetric software and see what we're going to do. All right. Welcome, John. Hey, Garbo. Dan. Ed, welcome, Ed. Bryn, good to see you guys. All right, so let's. Um, now I am not like I don't have anything pre prepared, right? Uh, to be honest with you, I haven't made a whole lot of kids' puzzles. So we're going to be uh, kind of uh, going through some of these uh, and experimenting and, and, and seeing what we can come up with uh, something that is, you know, easy for us to make, uh, enjoyable that would be enjoyable for the kids of all ages, you know, young young tykes running around and stuff and uh see what we can come up with so what i've done here is i've got a single-sided job set up and uh basically the size that i've created here is a size that we can kind of pull out of a <clears throat> basically almost like a one by eight to begin with so you know it's uh, 12 inches in length seven and a quarter inches wide uh three quarter inches thick now for this, I'm going to go ahead and uh, set up to work off the machine surface and off the center. Uh, many of you know that usually I work off the machine bed uh, in the bottom left corner, but uh, just trying to do a little bit of a variety here. Um, I don't uh, foresee, well, wait a minute, we're cutting out parts, so I am actually going to work off the machine bed. Let's switch that up. I'm going to work off the machine bed in the bottom left corner on my table. But you can set up the job, and I will make some files available to you, and you can set it up however you would, uh, you know, best fit your situation. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click OK. 
and let's open up this screen to a bit wider I'm, you don't have to see my ugly mug and let's go ahead and turn off our logo in the top corner so it doesn't hide it all right so i'm in vcard pro tonight uh everything that we're doing here could be done in vetric vcard desktop pro or aspire and uh you know we could these are just going to be concepts. Uh, they're actually going to be working pieces and parts that we can cut out when all said and done. But it hopefully it may be um, trigger something to um, take you further. You know, as far as uh, your imagination. You know, and, and different things that you can do. Uh, something that you think uh, uh, you know the youngins would enjoy. Uh, the First thing is, is we're going to start out with a very simple um, shapes puzzle. Uh, I remember as a kid uh, having, you know, these puzzles where I had to fit the uh, shape into the appropriate pocket, you know, uh, can't fit a round peg in a square hole type of thing. And that's where I learned that. And then I'll be darn, 45 years later, I'm pretty good with uh, mortise and tenon joints and things now and dowels and all, all because. I learned you can't put a square peg in a round hole. So, see there? We're educating people already. All right, so what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to come in and um, what I'd like is I'd like to have uh, this piece, this 12 by 7 and a quarter piece. I'm going to draw a rectangle. And what I'm doing is I've got smart snapping and um, geometry snapping turned on basically snapping to the corner here holding down that left mouse button and dragging that rectangle to the other corner snapping to it to create that rectangle boundary around my piece now i'm going to use this boundary to create an offset to create a frame i'd like to have this part uh this piece this puzzle if you will a uh, puzzle board uh we'll call it uh, i'd like it to have a a bit of a frame around it so uh, the little tykes have something they can carry or hold on to or or whatever the case may be and so I'd like to offset this rectangle inward. Uh, and I'm probably going to go a good one inch. Yeah, good one inch. Uh, we'll create sharp corners. Uh, we'll bring that in an inch and we'll just create that kind of outline here. Now, what you're going to see as we come in and create our other puzzles and stuff, um, you're going to see we're going to do some different animal shapes and all kinds of neat stuff. But right now we're going to start with a basic puzzle. Think of like uh, an inlay, if you will, of some contrasting materials and things. Uh, but they actually fit together nicely where kids can, you know, just drop them in and all that wonderful stuff. So uh, for this, let's go ahead and I'm going to get rid of this outside rectangle. I don't need it anymore. And so I've got a kind of a, a, a one inch frame here, and this is going to be the puzzle area. And we may do uh, something where uh, these pieces will kind of uh, could be where they fill up this whole area and they fit together. Or it could be just some individual shapes, some pockets and all. And our little tykes and kids have to get the right shape in the right hole. We could do some name puzzles where it could be like the individual's name and they have to drop the letters in. All these kind of things can, you know, with this blank slate, there's a lot of possibilities of the things that we can do. And um, <clears throat> the. All right. Uh, the. Uh, the basic is uh, we'll get started here with some drawing shapes and all. Now, before we get started, let's uh, jump in here and uh, let's answer a quick question because it's kind of a, a pretty simple one. Um, Keith uh, jumps in and says, hey, first time here from Canada. Welcome, Keith. Thanks for joining us. Can you explain how to open an SVG in Aspire? Well, opening an SVG, a DXF, a DWG, EPS, Adobe Illustrator file, all these type of files are vector files. And when we're opening a vector file, we're going to either go to our file menu in the top left corner, which is hidden by my brand here. Let me turn off that uh, banner for a second. Up in this top left hand corner, we could go to file and import, and we can import a vector from here, or we can use the import vector tool under our file operation. Now, when we're importing a vector, that would be a SVG, a DXF, a PDF, 
uh, all of those different things. And um, let's see what I've got here. Uh, this is an SVG document. Art one. I have no idea what these are, so we'll pop one in and see what old art one is. We'll click. What's that one? Is that one an SVG two? Text. No. Well, let's grab one of these. Let's see what they are. So all you're going to do, whether you're in Desktop Pro or Aspire, you're going to find your SVG file on your computer, uh, and then you're going to open it up. Now, depending on where this item was created by the creator in their little plane or platform and all, you're not going to see it <clears throat> probably right away pop up on your screen. But if we zoom out, we may be able to find our part. Let's see here. No. Okay, obviously that Tox document was not an SVG. It was something that was labeled SVG. Let's try that one more time. <laughs> it's like, now I'm going to have something hidden in my back end. No, let's see here. All right, let's find an SVG file. If I go to my downloads, uh, we'll go to here. <clears throat> And uh, dialogue graphics. That's an AI file. Bum, 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 bum. I know I've got some toolbar files. There's an SVG. So let's open that up. There we go. Hiding down here in the corner. Let's uh, scale that up. Now, an SVG is a scalable vector graphic. And so, uh, you know, this is the size it was actually created. But I can, it's scalable, it's mathematically correct, so I can scale it up in things uh, to, you know, whatever size it would be. And from there, there's no tracing, there's nothing uh, required, uh, and it is uh, ready to go to create your toolpath, you know, size it, position it how you want, and create the toolpath that you want in it. But importing those vector files is simply as simple as import a vector option finding the file on your computer and opening it up wherever it opens up, you know, get it positioned. You can size it up however you want and go from there. And that's it, bud. That's all there is to it. Hopefully that uh, helped you out a little bit, Keith, because uh, that's what I'm all about. All right. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, get into this. So what, let's start with just a very simple uh, shape puzzle, and then we'll get into the more creative stuff like name puzzles and things like that. So what I'd like to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and we'll create a star here. Fun stuff. <clears throat> we'll create a five-sided octagon. Let's go ahead and create a little ellipse. We'll get all these organized in a minute. We're just throwing them on the board right now. Maybe a little rectangle here. Or a square, not a rectangle. Circle. And then we got to challenge the kids a little bit. So we're going to throw in a little puzzle piece that, uh, you know, throws them off a little bit. We're going to go ahead and grab a square here. And a uh, bit of a circle there. <clears throat> Let's size these two up more appropriately. And then we're going to weld those two pieces together. All right. <clears throat> now, what you have to be aware of when you're working with any puzzle, especially when we get into the animal puzzles and things like that that are coming up, and the animal puzzles are going to be pretty cool. So don't let this bore you or anything, but right now we're just kind of getting the concept and stuff of, uh, you know, what we're wanting to achieve. Now, the first thing I'd like to achieve is I'm going to get my rectangle kind of about where I want it. And then I'm going to select my other two parts here. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to hold down my shift key and select that rectangle. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to align all of these uh, at their center. So I'm going to go into the alignment tool and I'd like to align them all up and down in their center. 
okay get them aligned across and notice this one didn't move it was already kind of pretty much aligned with that one same thing with the the star here let's get that kind of in <clears throat> to a position let's get our octagon or wait hold on what is it hex uh uh, Centagon or something like that. Pentagon. Ah, uh, Pentagon. I think. Ah, uh, one, two, three. Okay, so let's get. Uh, let's select these two items here first. Hold down our Shift key and get those aligned in the center. And then now that we have them all drawn out, we're going to select every one of those. Hold down our Shift key. Grab this rectangle last, and we're going to not do that. We're not going to do that at all. We're going to sit there and we're going to select all these items. We're going to, not this rectangle. We're going to group those items together for a minute. And I'm going to hit the letter G, G on the keyboard for group. And then I'm going to select this rectangle here. And I'm going to get everything kind of centered inside of that rectangle. All right. Now, what we have to be aware of is when we are going to be creating any kind of puzzle, any kind of puzzle piece whatsoever, uh, we have to be aware of the type of bit and the size of the bit that we're going to be using to cut these pockets as well as the metal pieces that are going to be fitting into them. And our, you know, we have a tool here called an inlay tool that allows us to create a cutout part and a pocket, and it'll match those two parts on how they are cut out. Uh, so that it will curve the radiuses properly on our inside and outside corners and things. And uh, very helpful tool. And it would work very well for a uh, puzzle or a part, you know, simple thing like this. Um, but let's, uh, let's get an eighth inch router bit on the board here. And imagine, you know, when I'm cutting this pocket out and everything, uh, as I'm cutting this pocket out, I can't get into these points and all so that's going to be very crucial when i cut this pocket out it's going to be stopping right about here but when i cut the outside part i could get my sharp points and we don't want that when we get to these inside corners i'm going to be getting a radius in these inside corners and when i'm cutting this pocket it's going to have sharp corners you know because my bit can travel around that corner so these are it's very important that we you know know what bit we're going to use to do our pockets and curves, and then we need to adjust things appropriately. Now, one of the things that we can do uh, is we can use the fillet tool. The fillet tool will help us on our sharp points and everything. It will help us uh, create those kind of radiuses that we need uh, for our bits, for our males and female pockets. And if I was using an eighth inch diameter end mill, my radius would be a sixteenth of an inch, zero six two five. And um, you know, when I am in these parts and pieces, I've got to make sure that, you know, they're going to be able to, you know, be filleted. Now the first thing I gotta do is they can't be filleted as a group. So I'm gonna go ahead and ungroup. And that is the U key on the keyboard shortcuts, the letter U. I'll just click the button over here. And um, <clears throat> with this fillet tool, my 16th inch radius and all, I'm able to go in and kind of get those radiuses put in on those inside corners. And then on the outside corners, I'm able to kind of radius them <clears throat> as well. Because I'm going to be using but these vectors for not only the male part, but also the female, or not only the female pocket, but I'm going to use them, uh, the vectors to help me cut out the male parts as well and all. So that is, uh, you know, critical that we make sure that our bit can get everywhere that it needs to get to cut those parts out and everything, uh, whether we're on the inside or the outside of, you know, our, our part. And the inlay tool does exactly that for us um you know when we are creating an inlay like for instance let's say on the octagon here uh pentagon i think it is pentagon yeah um when we are doing our uh straight male piece and everything uh we're going to choose a cut depth you know how thick we're cutting through 
uh, we're going to choose a tool. In this case, I'll go ahead and choose my eighth inch end mill. <clears throat> and uh, in this case, we're going to be cutting on the outside of the part. It would be the mail part that would be cutting out. But we're not going to cut these mails like this. We're going to minimize the waste of our material for our mail pieces. But I'm just demonstrating this for us. And, uh, you know, on this mail part, I'm not going to add any tabs and everything. I'm just going to calculate this tool path. And let's first of all change the cut depth to something more appropriate here for a moment. I'll just go 0.5 for a second. Now, when we come and look at this in the 2D view, <clears throat> and we uh, come in here and go into a solid view, we toggle the solid view, this icon up here at the top, we're going to see that the toolpath, even though that bit could have come and made that turn to create that sharp corner, the inlay tool path radius it off because that is exactly what's going to happen when we do the female pocket side of the inlay. When we cut that female pocket side, it's going to do the same exact thing. It's going to create that radius. So the it's creating the tool path so the two parts fit exactly well together. And so um, we could utilize that. We could utilize that absolutely uh, with creating. Uh, not only the pocket for our puzzle pieces and everything, but also for our male parts that are going to fit in there. Now, the one thing that we need to be aware of is generally, I always cut the male parts first, cut them out first. And I have those male pieces uh, sitting there so that when I do the female cut, if I misjudge, on my offset allowance, and let me grab my eighth inch end mill here. We want to use the same bit. On my cut, if I misjudge my pocket allowance, let me zoom down here so you can see this, uh, then I can sneak up on it and adjust that as I'm cutting that female until I get that perfect fit. Now, in the case of this, we want these puzzles, we don't want it to fit like an inlay where, I mean, it just, you know, a little bit of glue fill up, uh, you know, and just a perfect fit. We want these to kind of fit somewhat loose so that the part can kind of drop in for the kids, you know, and stuff. Uh, whether we're creating this to where it's dropping into a pocket or it's cutting, we're cutting all the way through and it just, you know, the pieces drop into a box. If you were making this as a lid of a box that held all the parts or whatever the case may be, um, we want to make sure that the allowance. Now, if I do no allowance, then that female pocket and that male part are going to be uh, machined in a way that there is no space for them uh, to, you know, for glue or anything like that if it, if it was an inlay. Uh, so what I generally do is cut the male parts out first, and then on my female pieces, uh, I put an allowance. And in this case, we want to give a, an allowance of... I usually start out small. So we're going to go negative point zero. Uh, I want this to be a positive, not a negative. Um, no, I want it to be a negative. I'm so sorry. I don't want to confuse you already early this early. Uh, I'm going to go uh, zero point, let's see here, zero zero five, five thousandths of an inch. And from there, and, and even in some parts, depending on, you know, the tolerance and all, uh, if I was doing an inlay, I usually start with like a 0.002, two thousandths of an inch, and then I'll go up to a 0 0.005, and then maybe 0 0.010, depending on how much, you know, wiggle room I need. Now, if we turn off our mail part here, what that does is it overcuts, that allowance is going to overcut this pocket by that five thousandths of an inch so that my male piece, when it gets cut out, this white piece is my male piece, will be able to fit in there uh, and, and everything, you know, uh, and that would be for the inlay. Um, if I, I have my part sitting there, I've got my pocket cutting and everything, and I can move the router out of the way and I can test cut that fit. And if it's still a little too tight, then I can adjust that allowance and let it cut a little bit bigger. And then I can sneak up on it with small numbers and just keep running that pocket uh, until I get it to that perfect fit. 
And that's what that pocket allowance does for us. Well, in this case, uh, for a puzzle for a, a, a youngin, we we want to we want a pretty pretty decent pocket allowance. We want them to be able to kind of fit the part in. We don't want it sloppy. You know, we want it to kind of you know where it fits, where they actually have to kind of turn it the right way. You know, for it to fit in there and, and everything. They can't fit it in upside down, all that kind of stuff. Um, except for you know an ellipse, they could turn that one upside down because it fit the same way. Uh, but um, <clears throat> the uh, the allowance here, what I would probably do is maybe a twenty thousandth, uh, uh, even a you know point oh three a thirty second or something allowance, uh, uh, 0.03125, uh, 20 thousandths of an inch allowance, and I, I would just make sure that that the part can fit in there, you know, pretty pretty fumblessly, and and when when it drops down in there, that it actually drops down in there, that they don't have to push real hard, you know. But it's not a real tight friction fit that they can just drop it in there and go, Ooh, look, mommy, what I did, you know, and even though we made it, that's what they're going to say. Look, mommy, what I did. Like what? Daddy made that for you. Mommy could have made it too, because we have some amazing young ladies joining us tonight. So thank you all. And so the, uh, you know, that's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of work with that tool path to create our parts and our pieces. The only thing is, is for the male parts, we're not going to cut them out in this formation. We're going to nest them, if you will, on our material to minimize our waste. Okay. So our boards are going to be our female pockets and everything. And then we're going to create a, our male cuts and stuff. So what I'm going to do with that being said is I'm going to select all my parts now that I've got them kind of. Uh, laid out and because i am going to use the inlay toolpath in this instance i don't need to go in and and radii or or you know fill it my corners and stuff because the toolpath the inlay toolpath is going to do that for me if i'm doing a puzzle <clears throat> where uh two parts are get together and it's not going to be an inlay it's like a puzzle like a maybe a 3d puzzle or or something then I need to go through and take the time to fill it each of these parts so that I can, uh, you know, cut them out appropriately. But I'm just going to leave them as there is. Now, even the star, I'm not going to leave the star just like it is, you know. And I'm going to select all of the vectors and I'm going to move them, move them to a new layer. And in this case, uh, I'm going to call this my male parts. And uh, we'll give this a color of red. Click OK. All right. So let's go in here and let's uh, delete this fourth axis. That was that little SVG sample that I brought in. We don't need that in this job here. And let's turn off our male parts. So we have them here and everything. And when I moved them, I didn't leave a copy on my female parts because I moved them on my, you know, on my board. So. Mistake number one for the evening. So what I need to do real quick is select these again. And this time I'm going to copy them back, copy them to a layer. And I'm going to copy them back to uh, my. Oops, that was the wrong one. Doggone it. Daggum it. Layer two is our animal puzzle. You'll see those in a moment. Copy to layer and we're going to put those on um, layer one. All right. So let's turn off our female job here for a moment. That's going to be our female pocket. And let's turn on our males. Now the males, if you are in VCar Pro or Aspire, you have a nesting tool that you can use that will organize these parts to be able to cut out to minimize the waste, maximize the yield of the material. Or we could simply just move them around and place them somewhere where we can kind of minimize our waste because we might be making a couple of these and I could probably get a couple of sets of parts out of this one 12 inch board, you know, so we could kind of nest things around to, you know, minimize our waste and stuff. And with that, you know, I can't fit that in there. 
uh, in this fashion, but I could probably, you know, fit it up here. I might be able to rotate some of these parts to fit better and things like that. So we're going to find that appropriate place. And then I could probably put another set over here, depending on how many of these I was making. And they'll get cut out. Well, the nesting tool does that as well for us. Uh, and sometimes does a very good job of nesting it based on our the parameters that we set. So let's take a look at the nesting tool and see if uh, it can do any better uh, than I. And the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I'm in my male parts layer here, that it's active and highlighted in bold because that's what I'm working on. And in that nesting tool, I'm going to use my eighth inch end mill to cut the part out. So now that it knows what size bit that I'm cutting, um, now I want a clearance. Now the clearance is when that bit is, and let's, let's draw this out. Uh, it's, there's a little diagram there, but let's go ahead and draw this out. Let's say I have two parts side by side <clears throat> and I've got my eighth inch end mill in here. That's going to cut these parts out. Now, when that bit is cutting out that part, the clearance is the space between the right side of that bit and the next part. So how much clearance do I want to give myself? You know, do a little clearance or a lot of clearance? And in the case of this, I probably would want to give it at least the eighth inch of clearance so that there's a little skin of material left, uh, you know, in between all the parts and things. Uh, that I could add some tabs and stuff to when I'm cutting them out. Or if I was using double side tape, I could have a very minimal clearance to where, you know, there's, there's very little room between that bit and the other piece. So in the case of this, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to go ahead and give myself about a eighth of an inch of clearance. And then my border gap is how far I want to keep the parts away from the border of my board. And, you know, um, I could probably, it all depends. If I have clamps that are going to be on the corners or something like that, then I'll probably stay away from the border. If I'm using double-sided tape to cut the parts out, which generally I do when I do puzzle pieces, I use two-sided tape. Um, then I can, you know, no border gap, just let it go right up to the edge. Cause I do have some parts that have straight edges and things like that. And I'll, so in this case, what I'll do is I'll give ourselves, uh, just a small little, uh, quarter of an inch border gap. Now, when it comes to the nesting options, we can rotate the parts for best fit and we can rotate, rotate step angle. Basically, you know, how far it can step uh, multiple times or what have you in order to fit until it gets, you know, that perfect fit. And so we could have it, you know, step at a 10 degree angle, uh, 45, 90, whatever the case may be to kind of get it to fit. This is just the step angle. Now we may be able to let parts be mirrored for best fit. Um, in this case, Usually the top part of my board is kind of, I usually pick the nicest face for the, to, to be the top of the part. Uh, you know, I pick the nicest face to the, of the material. And so I don't want to mirror the part because then that would make the bottom, the top and the top, the bottom. And also I don't want to a, a mirror it. If it's something where it doesn't matter, then you could mirror it so it could flip it around and, you know, for best fit and stuff. And if I was cutting a part out where there was some waste that's getting cut away in the middle of these parts, which there isn't. If that waste area was big enough, then I could allow some parts inside of others uh, to minimize that waste. So it'll, it'll put them inside of them. Well, in this case, the only option that, that fits is the rotate the parts. And so we'll go ahead and uh, click preview. It'll go through and rotate those parts. And uh, based on our parameters and everything, it'll nest those parts with that eighth inch border gap. And with that spacing and clearance and everything so that they could be cut out and kind of minimize our waste. And if I had multiple parts, let's uh, undo that. And let's say that I had, let's hold down that control key. Let's close this tool for a moment. Double click on it, hold that control key down and let's drag off another set of parts here. <clears throat> 
And uh, if I had all of these parts and I were nesting them together with those same parameters and all, we could go ahead and click preview and it's going to run through and nest them so I can get all those parts cut out and I could probably even have a little bit more room for other parts and things. That's what the nesting tool does for us. It does it kind of automatically where we don't have to sit there and kind of manually move the parts around and, and all. Now, if you do have Vetric VCarb Desktop, Vetric VCarb Desktop does not have the nesting function. Uh, it's in VCarb Pro and Aspire. Uh, so if you have desktop, never fear. You can always still manually move your parts around to get them to fit onto the material, um, you know, in a more uh, reasonable fashion and stuff, whatever you need to do to get those parts to fit so that you can cut them out and things. All right, all right, we got that. We kind of got that understanding and all. All right, let's go ahead and undo this. And uh, let's grab our parts here. I'm going to go ahead and nest them together. <clears throat> and uh, this is going to be the male parts getting cut out of a another contrasting piece of material. Now, oops, always click OK. Always click OK uh, to lock that in. There we go. Now, if our parts would not would not have fit onto the board, then it would have created another sheet of material and threw those parts on another piece of material uh, and things, uh, and it would have laid it out for us. So we would have had like sheet one to cut those parts out, sheet two to cut those parts out, sheet three and things. So the nesting tool would have done that for us automatically. <clears throat> All right, so I've got my mail pieces here. Uh, they're simple, very simple enough. Uh, we're going to go into the inlay tool path. We're going to use our straight uh, part here, and I want to cut them out. Now, the question is, is, is how thick and bulky do I want these parts uh, that the kids are going to be handling and things? Uh, do I want them to be three quarters of an inch thick? Do I want them to be a quarter of an inch thick? Do I want them to be a half inch thick? That's what we're going to determine. And even though our job is set up for three quarters, you know, on our job set up for a three quarter inch piece of material, I'm not going to create a second job, uh, you know, for a half inch sheet. All I'm going to do is I'm going to know that I'm cutting the male parts out of a half inch sheet. And that's what my cut depth is going to be, you know, for that part and everything, um, you know, and, and that's what I would like. I'd like my pieces to be, you know, cut out of a, uh, you know, a half inch thick. So. On this, I'd be using an eighth inch end mill. We want to use the same bit for both the male and the female. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use an eighth inch end mill. Uh, I'm going to be on the outside of the line. No allowance offset on the male parts. No allowance offset on the male parts. And I could add tabs, but see, when it comes to inlays and puzzles and things like that, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. I am not a big fan of uh, tabs. Because I have to then clean up those tabs and it kind of, you know, if I sand a little bit too hard, then it throws the part off and it doesn't quite fit into the piece and all. When I'm doing puzzles and, and everything, I like to use double-sided tape, whether it be the two-sided tape uh, method or the, the painter's tape and CA glue uh, method, but just that two-sided tape uh, so I don't have to um, add tabs to the parts. And so I'm not going to add any tabs to the parts. I will, however, add a ramp uh, to the parts. I'll do a zigzag ramp, and uh, I'm going to use an eighth inch end mill. So we'll go with a three eighths inch ramp here, and this is going to be my mill parts, and it's going to be for the simple shape puzzle. And it's using an eighth inch end mill EM. In the mill. All right. We'll calculate that out. After we select our vectors, always select your vectors. We'll calculate that out. And then we can go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, cut those parts out. Now, they're, only, they're not going to cut through on this uh, visual here. They're going to, um, because our visual is a three-quarter inch thick. So, for visual purposes let's change this setup to a half inch thick for right now on the material setup over here and <clears throat> recalculate that
And if we were to preview that cut, there we go. Get rid of our waste material, and there are our male parts. Now, remember, be kid friendly. Uh, do a little light sanding on those edges, knock off those sharp edges and things, uh, kind of smooth them out from the handle, uh, textile, you know, and stuff. All right, now for the female. So we're going to turn off our male parts, come back into our layer one here. We're going to select our puzzle pieces, and that's going to be the female pocket inlay. And of course, let's back up real quick. We could do, you know, if this was like cutting through where they have to drop it into a lid, like into a box, you wanted to make this the lid of the box, put some hinges on it so they can open it up easy to get the parts out. But, um, you know, we could uh, create that female where it's a hole, where it just cuts all the way through and they drop the parts right through, you know. In this case, I just want it to be a nice little fun little puzzle board that they can sit up on the shelf or something. And then uh, we can go ahead and, pocket that so for the pockets i want the pockets to be uh you know not as deep as my parts i don't want them to drop in flush and everything i'm probably gonna you know i'll have them stick up a little bit more so i'll probably either go like a quarter or three eighths of an inch you know pocket uh whatever the you know depending on um you know how deep i want them to drop it in and in this case we'll uh uh, we, we, we need them to be able to get the parts out and things like that, you know? And, um, so since my parts are a half inch, I'm just going to have where it drops half of it in. So we're going to go a quarter of an inch using that same eighth inch end mill. And, um, we could do an offset, let it go, you know, kind of offset these areas and everything. That'll be a more optimized tool path for this. And this will be my email and we'll get to questions uh here in just a second because i know you all might have some uh these are going to be my i'm going to just call it my game board and i'm just going to shorten that board simple puzzle. i think that's what i call the other one right the simple puzzle and uh it's also going to be a 1.25 or 0.125 in mil when we calculate that toolpath, reset our preview, preview the visible toolpath, when it cuts these parts out, <clears throat> it's going to create those radii. And I want you to, I want, I want someone to catch my mistake. Um, but it's going to create those radii for our, you know, our parts and everything. What was the one mistake that I made? And it was intentional. I just want to see how well everybody's paying attention. What was the one mistake I made? And I'll even open up the toolpath for you to take a look at it. Go on once. Go on twice. <clears throat> I'm hoping there's like a 30 second delay between what y'all are hearing and what I'm seeing. I don't see anybody jumping in right away. No allowance. Tim Miller, congratulations. Yes, I did not give myself the allowance that we talked about so much in the beginning. Um, we want to make sure that we give our female pockets an allowance so that the parts can fit in. Now, again, if this was an inlay, very small allowance. Sneak up on that cut for that perfect fit. You know, that nice fit little bit of glue space but in this case these are for kids so we're going to give it you know uh an allowance that the parts can kind of you know they got it they're going to have to fiddle and fuss with it now and to make sure it's turned the right way and all that stuff and again now this is a simple puzzle i want to say what ages um up to i don't know what five six uh you know well probably six-year-olds are probably they're in kindergarten they're probably doing more than they're 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 probably rocking out calculus by the time they're six. Um, but, you know, whatever age limit. And so what we want to do is I want to go a negative because we want the cut to go over the line. And I'm going to go a about a 30,000th, uh, which is a little less, 30,000, which is a little less than, uh, you know, a 32nd of a cut. And um, we're going to calculate that and uh, preview that toolpath. And everything in 
and uh, cut it out. Now, Lainey, you had this frame here, uh, but you, you didn't do anything with it. What what uh, what was the purpose of it? Well, my game boards uh, would typically be cut out of a three quarter inch piece. They wouldn't be cut out of a half inch piece. I'd make them out of a half, uh, you know, three quarter inch piece. And um, what I like to do is I would pocket this down so there's a little bit of a drop down, and then the shapes would be pocketed in. Um, and in order to do that, we got to make sure we give that female inlay a little bit of a start depth or, um, knowing just the outline of the perimeter where my game piece is, I could put some little handles here, uh, or, uh, you know, I could, um, you know, do something with it, dump something decorative. But in this case, what I actually want to do is I want to do a pocket cut and I just want to pocket it down just a small amount. I'm going to go with a cut depth of an eighth of an inch. And uh, I'll probably end up using a larger uh, clearance tool for this, a quarter inch end mill. Um, and uh, the just to give, click calculate, and let's preview that. Now we got to change our other toolpath. Now let's preview that visible toolpath though. Let's pocket that down. And we've got to change our other toolpath to bring it down that eighth of an inch. We've got to give it a start depth of an eighth of an inch. <clears throat> okay. And then let's go back to our game board puzzle here. And it needs to start at that eighth of an inch down. And then I want it to cut a quarter of an inch deep. How deep I want the pocket. <clears throat> and so uh, from here, Gives me just a little nice indention there for the parts and things uh, and, and everything. Um, I'd most likely round off the edges again, kid friendly. Uh, you know, we could do the round over in uh, with our CNC. Since I am using double side tape, I could throw my eighth inch round over in the mix. And um, let's draw a rectangle around the boundary of our board here. And uh, I drew it on the wrong layer. Let's come back and. Make sure, always make sure the layer you're working in is active. And I'm bad about that too. I'm bad about forgetting to go back and make sure the layer I'm working in is active. Because as you saw there, when I started to draw that rectangle, the layer that was active, the parts popped back up on the screen. And we don't want that. But if I was doing a round over, I would use a profile toolpath because anytime you're following a single line, whether you're cutting on the inside of the line, the outside, or on the line, it's a profile toolpath. And I'm going to uh, use an eighth inch round over and the white side 2050 uh, router bit is the one I have. And so my cut depth is going to be a quarter of an inch for that bit. Uh, I am going to use the uh, white side 2050, which I see that number there, but that's not the right one. And that's not the right one too. There we go. Um, and I'm going to be on the outside of the line, but I need that bit to step over so it's going to cut the edges and all. And I need it to step over an eighth of an inch, a third of the bit. Uh, so it's going to be a negative 0.125 step over. And then we can go ahead and this will be my <clears throat> game board edge round over and uh 0.125 in mill now you don't have to name your toolpath but boy it sure does help in keeping things organized as to what is what so if we do that round over we'll get that nice kind of soft edge and everything and again this this puzzle you know is kids ages up to i don't know any of you parents out there uh let me know what uh what age this simple shape game would be appropriate to you know, I'd probably have a hard time with it. All right, now let's get into something a little bit more uh, interesting. Now that we know the concept and what we have to do, and we know what that inlay toolpath does for us when we're creating something like this. Now, we're not going to be using the inlay toolpath on the next one. We're going to be using a combination of pocket cuts and profile cuts and things. But um, <clears throat> I wanted to show off that tool because whether we're making puzzle or inlays, it's a very cool tool. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, we've got that. Let's turn off that layer and let's jump into layer two here. 
And if you remember earlier, I copied those parts to layer two uh, by accident, and that's where they are. So we're going to delete them out. Don't need them there. And let's uh, take a look at what we've got going on here. So I've got some different uh, profiles of some different shapes. There's an old squirrel, uh, camel. We've got a little teddy bear here. Got a bunch of little elephants that, you know, we can put together to where all the little elephants make a puzzle. A little bunny rabbit. You know, same bunny rabbit without the inner parts, so we could make those parts ourselves and everything. So, in this case, let's uh, before we jump into these uh, puzzles and all, let's um, and again, I'm just picking some kid friendly uh, shapes and things like that. It could be whatever you want race car, turtle, 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 uh, anything like that. Um, no allowance, no allowance. Everybody jumped in with that. No allowance. Great guys. Good, good, good. Now let's answer a couple of questions that I saw, um, before we get into this and, uh, let's see here. Can the grain of the parts direction be set? So the grain runs the same in all the pieces. All right. So, uh, Jeff, that's a great question. A lot of people ask that. Now, when it comes to the nesting tool, the nesting tool is going to randomize those parts based on the way that we turn them, you know, or the way that we tell it to turn, you know, in 10 degree steps till it fits uh, or mirror it or flip it or this or that. And so by it doing that, then it's not going to um, run with the direction of the grain. So if you were uh, taking these parts and you want them to run with the direction of the grain so that they match when they're inside the puzzle, right? So when they're inside the male part, you want the grain of the, or when you're in the female part here, you want the grain of the male parts to match so that when this thing is sitting on the shelf, it looks kind of organized and cute and all the grain runs in the same direction. If that's the case, then you want to make sure that you organize these parts in a way that they are going to get cut out with the grain running in the appropriate direction. You know what I mean? So you're manually going to have to do that to make sure that um, <clears throat> the, you know, they're laid out. So when it cuts, the grain will run in the same direction as, as the uh, female pocket. Okay, so there's no, there's no, uh, the, the, the software doesn't know what grain direction our wood is running. Uh, we have to know, depending on how we clamp our board, what, what direction the grain is running. Um, and, uh, so there's no setting like, uh, run in the direction of the grain or this or that. Uh, you won't find uh, anything like that. It, that's a manual thing that we have to, you know, turn and organize the parts and place them in a, you know, a fashion or a matter that the grain will run when it's cut in the same direction as the female. That was a great question because I get that question a lot. So I wanted to share that one. Here's another great question from William. Couldn't you use the angle rotation and nesting tool uh, set to zero? Sure. We could. Um, basically what, uh, what Ed is saying is, is let's say that I have my male parts here and let's copy them back over, copy to the male parts. And I've got my male parts here and everything, and I want to nest them. If I'm in the nesting tool here, I could set the, I could turn off the, you know, rotate, uh, and not allow it to rotate the parts, or I could set that rotate to a zero angle. Uh, and, uh, you know, when I nest, it's going to nest them, you know, with no rotation, same thing, same thing, you know, we could do it manually or at all. Uh, if you're in desktop, you would do it manually, but we could set that to zero or we could just have that turned off either one. And, uh, it wouldn't rotate the parts. It'll just nest them the best that it can to get them all to fit together. You know, so absolutely. Great question. All right, let's go ahead and let's get into our 
animal puzzles here. Let's make sure that our layer is active. Highlighted in bold. Wonderful. All right. So let's take a look at um, a uh, an example here. First thing I'm going to do is let's grab this bunny that has the parts kind of already. Well, Lord of mercy. Get her there. It's a Wasquee Wabbit. <laughs> it wouldn't come out. And let's look at our, just our silhouette. Now, on this, uh, you know, um, puzzle here, we have, you know, these individual puzzle pieces that will, you know, ultimately, when they go together, they're going to fit inside of this silhouette, which is our outline, if you will. And um, that will uh, allow the parts to fit together and, you know, is to give them, you know, a fun puzzle. So we're going to look at that, uh, but we're going to, we're going to draw it from scratch. I'm not going to give you guys the easy way and say, here, this is, this is all it looks like. We're going to delete that. Ah, uh, we won't delete it. Let's uh, move it back off the board. We'll keep it over here for reference. All right, let's say on our rabbit here, <clears throat> First thing I want to do is this is going to be a decent sized puzzle, right? So I'm, I'm going to size it up and I probably end up rotating it as well, but let's get it kind of sized up and um, into position. And, and oh, somebody forgot to turn off their uh, volume on their phone. Sorry about that. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I may even, uh, which would be fun is on a puzzle like this, I'd probably move him off to the side and maybe have a couple of carrot shapes and stuff that would get dropped in over here or something, you know, where they had to, the bunnies after their puzzle, after the carrots. But let's take a look at uh, this. So first things first is I have a silhouette and this is going to be my frame. This is going to get all pocketed out. And then I'm going to use this shape to actually draw puzzle pieces, depending on how I want to break this silhouette up into, so that, uh, you know, we can create some puzzles with it. And the thing that I want to make sure of is that on my cuts here, once again, you know, once I get everything laid out, I want to make sure that my cuts are going to be able to you know my parts are going to be able to fit in here and um when the male pieces and everything get cut out i want to make sure that there's you know none of these sharp points and all they need to be radius and everything to you know fit appropriately uh when they get cut out but i don't know what those objects are yet that need to be um you know uh, all I know is I have a silhouette that's going to be pocketed out and uh, I'm going to now draw the parts to fit in here. So we're going to draw the bunny rabbit first and then we'll get into that elephant and talk about that. Uh, with the bunny rabbit, I would like uh, to have um, probably the, you know, four to five individual pieces uh, that will uh, fit and things. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an offset. And that offset is going to be, this is going to be my profile. This is what's going to get pocketed out after we fill it properly. But I'm going to create an offset so I can start chopping up that offset and drawing in some extra lines and all. So we're going to go into our offset tool here. We're going to offset inward. And I'm going to offset a very small amount. I'm most likely going to offset probably about a 30 second. So we'll go uh, 0, 3, 1, 2, 5. And uh, I want to offset inward. And I do not, do not want to create sharp corners uh, on that. And uh, I want to select these new offset. Okay. And so this has given me the uh, inside silhouette of the parts that are going to fit in there. Now, if a 30 second is too much like you know that's too sloppy it doesn't fit in you know it fits in too sloppy i want a little little tighter we could go a little tighter there and all but a 30 seconds not too big we could go a 64th if we wanted to depends on how much uh you know 
if I've already got the part here, then, you know, that's going to drop in like this, then I don't really have to give myself an allowance when I'm doing the pocket cuts and stuff. Um, but these don't let these rounded edges fool you. They're going to change. Everything of this part's going to change because we've got to make them fit appropriately. So we're going to be, you know, filleting some of these areas and stuff too. All right. So I have this new vector here. And this is the vector that I'm going to use to kind of uh, start chopping up and things. So let's go into our um, circle tool. And let's say that probably somewhere right about here, I'm going to go with a uh, three eighths inch. I'll kind of, uh, oh, it's like I can make it a little bit bigger. Let's go a half inch. This half inch diameter, this is going to be kind of the diameter that I use for all of my uh you know pieces that kind of fit together and stuff uh because again it's kids we could make it smaller if we wanted um you know if one and two but we're not going to just use circle shapes we're going to be uh mixing and maxing these shapes a little bit but this is going to be a good start all right now from here uh basically i'm going to take uh this ear kind of cut it off and create this puzzle piece from you know the ears here so i'm going to probably go into here and you know, just come over here, somewhere right about there. About like that. And in this area here, I'm going to go into node editing. And what I need to do is on this vector right about there, uh, I'm going to right click and cut that vector there over here where i've got this one i'm going to select on this vector here and cut the vector there is he going to let me cut him yeah it cut <laughs> appropriately and so now i should have by doing that i should have uh this arch and just the top part of the ears that now i can kind of you know group together if you will so let's take that they're not grouped together join use the proper terms laney join together so i'm going to go into my join tool and i've got two open vectors selected and i'm going to join them into one closed vector okay so that's going to be that one shape and now i've got this uh puzzle piece here and i want these pieces to kind of be somewhat interlocking you know uh so i want to kind of uh, distort uh, this shape a little bit and I want to bring it down to kind of create an interlocking and remember we're going to have to create radiuses and stuff and all that all right so with that I can go ahead and take those two shapes there and I'm not going to weld them together you know uh, I'm not going to trim them together because if I trim them together, that, that doesn't help me kind of create my female part or anything like that. What I am going to do is do that is I'm going to use my trim tool here, not the scissor trim tool, but the standard trim tool. And I'm going to subtract one shape from another uh to kind of create this part so basically what i want to do is i want to clear everything inside of the boundary and if i select this object first i'll make that my boundary and i make this part second if i clear everything inside of that boundary boundary is always selected last there we go uh, if I clear everything inside of that boundary, then when I do that, it's going to kind of draw this shape up and it went the wrong direction. That's not what I want. I want it to kind of go down and around. So, hmm. Let's go ahead and hmm. let's see if I can do this a little bit better. We're missing a part. <gasps> We're missing a part. What we're missing is this bottom piece the head so we're going to have the head as a second part here oh 
gosh, we're going to cut off the rabbit's head. That's going to be terrible. All right. So if I sit there and try to subtract this from this, it's going to subtract in the wrong direction. It's going to create this little nub when I want this to be a part uh, for a puzzle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step back one step to where I am uh, with the undo button. A uh, couple of steps here. <laughs> and get back to my individual pieces here. And what I need to do before I go shaping this shape and everything in this part and all, I've actually got to create my second part that it's going to fit into. And what I, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take this object and I'm going to copy and paste right on top of it. Okay. And now I'm going to uh, determine, you know, how much, how much gap that I want to kind of give between these two parts. And so if I grab this here, I can, you know, with it selected, I can use my arrow key and kind of bump it down. If I hold down my control key and use my arrow key, I can micro crop it down, that type of thing. And I don't want to go down too much. So let's close this tool path so you all can see what's happening here. I'm just going to hold my control key down and I'm going to use the down arrow key on this part and i'm just gonna bring it down ever so slightly okay ever so slightly little gap in between there and that new vector there is going to be joined to this shape so we're going to go into the join tool and at this point it's not going to let me join because my ends are not quite together because there's an overlap right so we go to trim that overlap away it's not going to work either because look my line doesn't extend so now that we have our shape and i'm trying to i'm just showing you all everything that you're going to run into and uh how to counteract it you know when we brought this shape down when we micro stepped it down it stepped it down and we got an overhang here and we're short here. Zoom in. We're short there. I do not want to move this over because uh, I want. I came straight down. I want these parts to fit together. So what I'm going to do is over here, I'm going to use the extend tool to extend this line to here. Over here, on this side, I'm going to use the scissor tool to trim that line to here. And now I can remove that line there and that line there and when i i have this set to rejoin the trim sections when they're when the form is closed so when i close this that little x that you guys and girls might have caught over here is gone those two end pieces have been brought together so now that i have this part that's one object and this part, now I can go ahead and start to get the link organized. So we're going to want to bring this down and I want to kind of fatten it up a little bit. About like that. And the circle is still going to be my boundary. This time I'm going to select this vector here. And I'm going to hold down my shift key and select this oval last. And I'm going to use my trim tool and I'm going to clear inside of that boundary. And when I do, it's going to redraw that shape around my part. Now that I've done that and everything, I can go ahead and use my trim tool scissors here and I can trim these two pieces together. And I've created a puzzle piece and a female piece that fit to, that, that are going to fit together it's not done yet but we've created that part those puzzles and the reason why it's not done yet is because when that router bit cuts out that mail it can't get into those sharp corners and everything let me get my let me snap my uh part back into place where it belongs
it's not going to fit. When I cut out this female, my router bit can make that turn. It can make that turn and create those sharp corners. But when it comes in here to cut this male part out, or you know this part out here, um, it's not going to be able to do it. So we have to offset it to you know match. And there's a cool trick for that within the Vetric software. The trick for this is we're going to use the offset tool and we're going to, uh, the radius of my router bit, I'm going to use an eighth inch bit to cut these parts out. So my radius is a sixteenth of an inch. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to offset outward. No sharp corners. Don't delete the, uh, well, yeah, delete the original, select new. And when we do that, we're going to automatically come back and offset inward. And when it comes inward, then it's going to recreate those rounded shapes based on that radius. Outward, inward. Same thing is if we were doing this part here, which we're not done yet with this part. So we're not going to do this part yet until we cut the, <laughs> the head off or what have you. But if I were to offset this part, now this is the, the, the female part and everything. I need them to go out and then back in. So in this case, it's going to go inward first or outward, outward, just like I said before. It's going to go outward and then back inward. And in this case, I did it backwards, I think. Yeah. All right. Let's undo that. It's inward, outward. I knew one of them was inward, outward. Inward first. And then outward. Okay. And that creates those radiuses all that my part can cut out. Now, when I come in here and, uh, you know, put my puzzle piece uh, together and everything, everything, we got a nice fit. So on your male part, it's outward, inward, female part, inward, outward. Just back to back to create those radiuses and all. So we've got that part created. And everything. Now I don't want to do that just yet on the female, so I'm going to undo twice. Get back to this because I still got to finish making this part. I got. I need to make all of my parts first, and then do you know my offsets and things like that. Now this one doesn't matter because that part's done, but I've got to start kind of breaking this up into different parts and all. Now a uh, couple of questions here. And uh, that will answer. Wayne Henniker says, uh, is there a reason you're using the offset and not the raster? When I was cutting those parts out, Wayne, those small pieces and everything, and they're pocket cuts, uh, they're uh, doing the offset round and round and round is going to be much more optimized than back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, they're pockets and, um, I, I, you know, the uh Offset cut's going to be a more optimized cut. It'll be a, a quicker cut for me than the raster. Now, if I was doing a 3D rough cut, 3D finish cut or something like that, I'm always rastering. I want to cut with the grain. I don't want to do an offset cut. But when it comes to pockets and, and things like that, uh, the offset toolpath is going to be more optimized. Kevin, do they have a puzzle gadget? I The last I looked at the gadget library, I, I didn't see a puzzle gadget. Uh, but there are a couple of places out there like um, Inkscape uh, has a cool little puzzle add-on that uh, can help you make puzzle pieces. And then you can save those pieces as vectors, you know, SVGs or DXFs or what have you. And you can bring them in here to create puzzle pieces. But in here, we are, you know, we're manually creating a puzzle based on a, a simple profile silhouette. And no, there's no puzzle gadget. For that all right so now i've got to kind of basically uh come in and decide where i want to you know break up the next piece and stuff and uh <laughs> we'll do his head um let's say that uh you know i don't want to you know uh 
a straight line space bar. So I'm using the curve tool. Give me a nice little curve there. And if I wanted to mix it up, you know, I could go into node editing here uh, on my curve and, uh, you know, I could kind of give myself a bit of a curve. You know, so it's not just a, a straight piece, you know, a straight line across and all. You know, we want them to have some kind of organic shape to them, uh, what have you. And we just have to remember that, you know, whatever we do, how our parts are going to fit into one another, you know, we need to, you know, make sure that we make that a reality. And so um, in here, uh, right in this area, uh, probably somewhere right in here. I'm going to, and let's stretch this out a bit. I'm creating that interlocking piece, you know, that, that needs to, you know, uh, fit, you know, so the two parts, you know, fit together uh, and things and kind of lock together. And in here with this, remember, I've got my shape here and I've got my part here. And this part is going to be, you know, part of that. Uh, but don't forget, I got to, I've got to create my copy of my curve and to create my two lines to my separation, if you will. And, um, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste that and, uh, we'll, uh, either in or out. It doesn't matter. We can enter out and we can use the offset tool as well. Let me show you that instead of the copy tool, we could create an offset of this part uh let's go outward that's fine and very small offset let's go point thousandths of an inch no sharp corners none of that stuff create that offset ten thousandths a little bit too much let's go five thousandths create that offset that creates my my separate piece here and all. Now on this, remember, I've got to, you know, I've got to do my trimming and separate my parts. So let's go in here and we're going to go with our scissor tool. We're going to trim this and trim that. Come over here. Trim this, trim that. Now look, I got that little overhang area, right? But with this rejoin, when I close that, those two ends come together and close up. Okay, so I've got my two separate pieces here. Now this is one piece and this is another. Now this piece here is going to be attached to the lower part and I want this upper piece to be redrawn around that. So I want to select my object last, but I want to select the shape that's going to be redrawn. That's going to be first. So my head, select that first. Hold down the shift key, select the oval here last, and again, subtract, clearing inside of that boundary. That oval's the boundary. I selected it last, and I want to clear the inside of that boundary. And when I clear the inside of that boundary, it's going to redraw that vector around that edge. Okay, so now if we pulled that part out of the way, you could see that, that piece. Right. Let's put that back. <clears throat> and now I'm going to come in here with my scissor tool and trim this part together to create that mail. Now, Laney, you're screwing yourself up because you offset that line at ten thousandths of an inch and you're just trimming to this shape. Wouldn't it be better to offset this also or that five thousandths of an inch? Wouldn't it be better to offset that? Uh, uh, five thousandths of an inch and then trim it i know one of you are asking that question and uh you'd probably be right uh the part here if we offset that that five thousandths of an inch <laughs> that part there could be the part that this gets trimmed to uh so that it uh fits in but by not doing it it gives me a nice Kind of a uh, uh, fitting puzzle that I would have to, you know, offset. So we got to decide right here and now what's going to be the best way to go. And for me, 
This is a kid's puzzle we got to keep in mind. We're going to use that inside offset, which I didn't do up there, but that's okay. Let me fix that. We'll use that inside offset. But what happens here? My line doesn't reach. Extend tool to the rescue. We're going to extend that line to here. Extend that line to here. And then we're going to use our scissor tool to trim that. And that's going to create that next part, you know, my body, which is not done yet. We still got more parts to cut, but you guys and girls are getting the idea. I can't believe I cut the rabbit's head off. I probably should have went down further in his body. Um, but you guys can change and fix that if you want. If your kids like traumatic guys, <laughs> the bunny rabbit's head fell off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We don't want to traumatize these. We want to give them something fun to do. Okay. And um let's uh let's continue on. All right. Now on this piece here, uh I've got to decide what I want to what I want to do. And I'd like to have uh this piece come around and uh the arm be a part. So let's grab a curve tool here. And there's no, you know, uh rhyme or reason or place or anything like that uh just somewhere in here i'll probably go right about here let's uh bring this in a little bit come down love the curve tool for this type of thing uh let's space bar to finish <laughs> okay all right, uh, so with that, dun, 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 dun. perfect. Okay, <clears throat> with that, we're going to take my vector that uh, was drawn, we're going to offset that in one direction or the other. Let's go inwards fine. There we go. All right. And um, got to figure out how these are going to link together. Uh, let's get these two parts made first of all. So we're going to use our scissor tool. We're going to trim away that overhang, trim that away. That'll separate that side. Come over here and got to use the extend tool. Extend that line, click the extend tool here to there, and use our scissors to trim that away. All right, that separates our leg from uh, the rest of the pieces. And now I want to create my little shape that, you know, uh, I usually like using the ellipse tool or circle tool or what have you, draw whatever, you know, the part might be. It doesn't have to be, you know, perfectly symmetrical. Um, we can, you know, kind of stretch things out. Rotate it a bit, you know, so they kind of interlock, you know, whatever the shape may be. All right, let's go out like that. All right, now on this one, it's always the larger shape. It's the it's the line on the a larger shape. So it's going to be this vector here because I'm attaching this nub. If I was attaching this nub to this piece and it was going to fit into there, then this is what I'd be subtracting, um, you know, clearing the inside of the boundary. But I want this peg, if you will, to be attached to the leg. So I want to subtract the inner line. So with that inner line selected, select that rectangle last and clear inside of the boundary. And I said rectangle, that's an oval, Laney. Um, that ellipse, uh, the ellipse was selected last. That's the boundary. We want to clear inside of that boundary. And there we go. It's going to redraw that shape around that boundary. Now with that shape redrawn around that boundary, we're going to take our boundary and offset it inward at five thousandths of an inch. We could have deleted the original at that point. 
<clears throat> get rid of that. And then all we have to do here is trim, 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 any, trim, trim, any, trim, 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 you know, to create that, that part or that gap. So now I've got, you know, my leg part here, right? We've got our head part. We've got our ears, you know, we're slowly tearing the bunny apart. Now, to give this bunny some character, we could do some V carving on the puzzle, right? We could V carve a little mouth, a little profile cut with a V bit to give it a little mouth. We could V carve a little eye in here. You know, we could, uh, uh, you know, V carve some little inner circles in here to create some like little lobes in the ears, you know, and stuff. Uh, they don't have to be just plain Jane boring and all. We could, you know, like, you know, with that bunny rabbit or be creative with our elephant trunks which we're going to get to in a minute. Let's wrap this one up and um, let's uh, uh, come in here. And before we go any further, let's answer another question. <clears throat> hey, Lenny. So if I were to cut the female on the CNC with the allowance, if I were to use a laser to cut, say, quarter inch birch, I would use the fillet tool to match the DXF of the female. Is that correct? Now, stand by. You're talking two different things here. Okay. Um, when you're using your CNC bit, you have an end mill, right? We have, we have to take into account the radius of the end mill. If you have a laser, then you don't need to account for that radius and everything. Uh, your laser cut can cut out the parts pretty precisely. So, to answer your question, if I were to cut the female out on the CNC with that allowance, if I were to use the laser to say cut quarter inch birch, I would use the fillet to match the DXF of the female. Absolutely. You would have to, if you cut the female out um, with the uh, CNC and everything on your parts and all you would have to your other your laser cut parts would have to match it you know to fit in now if you cut if you cut this part here with the cnc whatever radius is that that bit uh you know requires or cuts and everything then your parts need to if you laser cut them your parts need to be able to fit they have to be able to interlock you wouldn't have to really fill it all these inside edges and everything if you were using the laser to cut out the male parts but as a whole, they all have to fit into this female part. And if your bit can't get into that corner or that point, then let's get Dave's question off there. If that laser can't get into that, you know, or that bit can't get into that corner and it kind of rounds it off, then all of your female parts and everything have to be able to fit in there. So wherever that fillet would be required, for your laser cut you would do it but on your actual parts here if this if these were being laser cut you wouldn't have to fill it these edges and all because the laser can cut those precisely you wouldn't have to fill it these you wouldn't have to radius these which we're cutting all these parts with the cnc so we absolutely do have to radius them <clears throat> so hopefully that answers your question There you go. Uh, Troy's thinking outside the box. Uh, Easter egg shaped interlocking pieces because Easter is coming up. That's why I grabbed the bunny. But uh, yeah, Easter egg shaped, uh, you know, interlocking parts and stuff uh, for the interlocking parts that could be Easter egg shaped and things. So exactly. And um, you could uh, now take it a step further, Troy. And on your female pocket, you could have a series of Easter egg shapes that actually, when they're all put together, you know, when they, when those Easter eggs are all put together, they fill up the bunny. If that's what you're referring to, then absolutely you could do that. That would be fun. Uh, we, you know, your Easter egg shapes, you know, try to figure out how they, you know, draw out your Easter egg shape, trim them, you know, with your little, uh, 
V groove lines for the little decorations on the Easter eggs. And when they're all dropped into place, they all fit inside the bunny. That would be cool. Absolutely. All right, let's finish this up so we can move on to a bigger and better pastures. Um, let's see here. I'm going to take this. Let's go. Space bar to finish. Okay. Come in here and let's offset that. We'll go inward again. Come in here and use the extend tool. Rinse and repeat, guys and girls. Rinse and repeat. Extend tool there. Do I need it over here? Nope. It's a trim. So come in and trim this and trim that to separate that part. Trim that to separate that part. Now we need these parts to be able to interlock. And if this was a really, really young kid or something, you could just have it to where you could create these curved lines where the curved lines just drop in together. They don't have to be like an actual puzzle piece. You know, if it was like a really little kid's puzzle, you could just have, you know, create some nice curves. So where this part just drops in and that part drops in and all, they don't have to interlock. You know, I just like the interlock piece. Gives it uh, some little bit of extra stuff. All right, let's um, come in here and let's say down here. All right, once again, I'm going to have this part here this part here connected to this part right here and um so that second line in my inmost inner line which is this lower shape here that's what i want to clear inside of this boundary so when i subtract or trim clearing inside of the boundary it'll redraw that shape around that boundary then we can create our offset of our little oval shape here. <clears throat> Delete our original. And then with our scissors, just trim these two parts away to weld those pieces together. And now we have, you know, our next piece. And now we're getting down to the final two pieces. Uh, I'm just going to do the tail. So let's grab a curve tool. Somewhere here. Space bar to finish. And once again, use the offset tool to offset inward at five thousandths of an inch. Use our extend tool to extend this to there. Use our scissor tool to separate those two parts. And over here, did I just cut away, cut away, cut away? Try that again. I clicked when I should have clicked. Okay. Trim that away. And then up here, both of these, this is going to get trimmed and that's going to get trimmed to separate that. Close that off. And now my bunny tail. And again, you know, with these parts like this, um, we wouldn't have to do any offsets or anything like that. If it was just a little kid's puzzle, we could just cut out those parts uh, and everything. If it was just nice curves and lines and stuff. But I'm creating kind of interlocking pieces. Like if they want to put the bunny together outside of the little frame pocket that we're going to make for it. Uh, they just wanted to put the bunny together over here. You know, then the parts will stay locked together. All right. So on this bunny. Uh, let's 
let's rotate that a bit. And again, I'm going to have this part connected to this part. So it's this piece, this inner piece that I want to be redrawn around that boundary. So hold down our shift key and select that boundary last. Clear the inside of it. And then we can offset this inward. Delete the original this time. And then all we have to do is trim that away to create that final two parts. So now we got our little bunny tail and and all. So now we have all of our bunny pieces. Okay. So now what we have to do is we need all of these uh, parts and everything to be able to fit together and all. And so if we were to look at uh, these two parts side by side here, my router bit, my eighth inch end mill, when it comes to cut this male part out, it can't get into there. But on the female cut, it could absolutely create that sharp point, And that's not what we want because then the two parts don't fit together. So what we need to do is, uh, first of all, separate these so they're not overlapping and confusing you, uh, is we need to create that 16th of an inch radius wherever, you know, it applies. And wherever it doesn't apply, we can come back and undo the, the radius. Uh, you know, we could use our fillet tool. We could use our inside, outside offset tool, however we want to do. I like the offset uh, tool. It's a pretty cool tool. Uh, so on this one, it's going to offset outward first and then back inward by that 16th of an inch, my radius. We're going to delete the original, no sharp corners. It's going to go outward first and then back inward. And that's going to create that radius for me. And then on this one, the opposite one, it's going to go. It's going to offset inward and then outward. And that's going to create that female part so that um, the two pieces fit together. If I can drop them in, let me get them situated. Those two parts will fit together and interlock. And then this one's already done. We don't have to worry about that. Uh, this part here, we're going to go outward. Delete the original. Let's undo that. Control Z. Make sure to delete the original is selected. We're going to offset outward. And then inward. Oh, no, that's an inward outward part. I can, I can tell by this here. Is it an inward outward part? Let me look at that again. Offset outward first and then inward. No, nope, that's an outward inward. All right, outward first and inward. I was looking at this, but that's not, that's, that's not important. I'm looking, we're, we're watching where the joints go. This one is going to be an inward outward because it's got the females. So I think I okay, can't don't use that. Don't use that logic as the logic. Um, inward first, then outward. There we go. That creates all those radiant parts. This one got a combination of both. It's going to go. outward and inward and that creates the radius on these outside parts now i've got to create the radius on these parts so that's going to go because it's, it's two it's it's got the male and the females on there so it did the males on that first outward inward now on the female i've got to go inward 
and then outward to create those radiuses. Oh, there's a thunderstorm of brewing. All right, so let's go ahead and um, get our bunny together. So he'll kind of, well, let's put them together inside this pocket area here. Now, if you're looking at the gaps and all like, man, what's that gap? Why is it all gap like that? Because we still got to create our little uh, pocket cuts, right? So they fit and everything properly. Um, the gap is that allowance that, you know, we're given. So these parts just kind of uh, fit together. We got the head. The body. Let's space that. Got to use that control key. Let me get that one just right. That. The leg. Get that into position. Hold that control key down so I can micro adjust it to get it into position for you guys and girls. There. And then these two are already together, so we'll just move them up. Oops. <laughs> Try that again. We'll just move them up into position. Move them where they belong. Micro, hold that control key down for that micro movement. Now, this is the one that I need to make some adjustments to because I didn't, when I created that that circle cut and everything, I didn't offset that 10 thousandths like everything else is. Um, he needs to be, let's get in a position. Everybody still with me? Everybody still with me? Yeah, the lost connection. It sounded like a tree fell out in the yard somewhere. And when it did, uh, we lost connection. So let's take a moment and do a check. You guys tell me if you're still here. You tell me if you're still here. My screen just came back, so now I can see you guys. Have some high winds and everything, so it sounded like a tree just came down. As soon as it came down, it was, uh, it crashed. Them Florida storms for you. All right, good. Okay, so what I was saying was getting this part back in. Remember when I first, um, I didn't do my ten thousandths of an inch offset. You know, I had it here, you know that that offset there. But on that oval, I didn't offset that 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 initial shape, uh, and um, you know, so it's bringing it to kind of almost like a regular puzzle, a tight fit. And so I don't, you know, I don't want that. And so what I'm going to do, uh, rather than, you know, backtrack and everything is I'm just going to go into node editing here and I'm going to, uh, cut the vector here and here and delete that. I'm going to cut the vector here and here and delete this. 
I'm going to join this with a smooth curve. And I'm going to join this with a smooth curve. I'm going to get my shapes somewhat back in, you know, unison. So let's see here. This is my part. Let's pull that. Get my parts separated first, and then I'll create my little ten thousandths of an inch cap. Got to do a little cleanup because I didn't pay attention in the beginning. Okay. going to turn off the smoothing on here what that's going to do is going to lock yeah we just lost signal again so i'm going to try to get through this hopefully we don't get disconnected but mother nature is Mother Nature is not agreeing with me tonight. Okay, let me see where my lines are here. Got spacing there. That's all I care about. Insert a point right about here so I can bump that up. Pretty close to fitting together. Not too shabby for screwing it up to begin with. Let's uh, smooth that one a little bit better. All right, close enough. So now that I have those two shapes, I can go ahead and come back in here. Let's uh, get this part. All right, with that, once again, I want to take this shape here, hold down my shift key, select this shape here. I want to clear inside of that boundary to redraw it. I want to be sure this time to offset my original little oval inward by that point zero zero five, deleting the original. And that's going to give me that offset. And now I can use my trim tool to trim that part to get that back together. And now that I have the piece, uh, once again, let's do this in place so you can see this has got the male part here. 
So if I offset this by that sixteenth of an inch, 0 0.0625, we're going to offset outward, deleting the original. Control Z to undo that. Delete the original. Offset outward and then back inward to create that radius. Okay. And then on this part here, uh, this is going to be my female part. So we're going to offset inward and then back outward. Create that piece. Okay. And so now I have that part there. And we've got a little rabbit. Now, this rabbit could be. Um, you know, a little kid's toy to where it doesn't have to be inside of a pocket, but I would like to cut these parts out and also do a pocket cut of a rabbit shape so they know what they got to build. I got a board here that's 12 inches long. I could probably make this a little bit smaller and make it more of a square puzzle than a rectangular puzzle. I could throw in some additional little fun little things over here, you know, something to do with a rabbit. Easter eggs, like someone said, I could draw some Easter eggs here and it could be like a little Easter egg puzzle where they got to put the rabbit together and the little eggs. Uh, who said that? That was, um, oh, oh, hold on a minute. We lost everything. I lost the screen. Sorry, guys and girls. Did y'all see any of that? Let's stop right now. All right, let's stop here. Y'all didn't see any of that repair uh, in that. You just saw me talking. Just saw me just 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 chatting away. Oh, chatting away. Okay. So let's undo the keys for a minute. And get over here and undo for a second. Okay. <clears throat> All I did was delete this original. Jesus. All right. Deleted the original uh, little oval shape that I had there and uh, got my little spacing back between my two parts here. And I redrew this new piece here. Okay. And selecting this lower part, I want to come in and select this oval. Offset, not offset. <laughs> Shit. Clear the inside of the boundary. Boom. That's going to redraw that shape around that oval. Now I want to take that oval and offset it inward by that five thousandths of an inch. Deleting the original. That's going to create my little offset there. And now I can trim those two parts together to create that part for my ears. Now, up close and personal so you can see how this works. On this part, this is the male part here. I need to offset by the radius of the bit that I'm going to be using. So we're going to offset outward first. Delete the original. So offset outward. And then back inward to create that radius corner. Now my next piece is the female piece here. And we're going to take that female piece and we're going to offset inward. And then outward to create that matching part. Okay, so now I've got the bunny done, and what I was saying was, is um, I would, you know, with this bunny puzzle, you know, we could uh, create a little pocket cut over here. We could throw in some little Easter egg, you know, shapes. on little Easter eggs. And um, we could create, uh, let's go and offset inward that five thousandths of an inch. And let's take, let's take this one here and rotate it out like that. Hold down that control key, drag a copy off over here, and rotate this one about like that. And that'll be his two little eggs. 
And for the Easter eggs, the outside of this vector is going to be the pocket cuts. The inside is going to be the two parts. And I'd like to kind of break them up. Let's do a little zigzag line, like a little pattern. Let's go. Space bar to finish. Let's do this one. Space bar to finish. I'm gonna create an offset five thousandths offset inward. This one over here, same thing. Offset both of those. Zoom in and trim trim to create that half. Extend and trim on this one. Extend. Click, click. So click here first and then here. Extend. Extend. Not let me extend. Okay. Let's see if we can get it to work this time. Okay, he is just not extending. Why are you not extending? That's all right. Will he extend to this one? Nope. Nope. All right, so that one won't extend. So what I got to do is got to cheat on that one. I'm going to go into node editing. And I'm going to drag that up to the line. <laughs> and then I can use the scissors to trim that away. Extend tool just wasn't had it on. Little third puzzle piece in there. Offset that. inward see if the extend tool is going to work with me for this time extend from here to there yes it did yes indeedy very selective little tool it is trim away that overlap all right so now i've got these three parts here and uh my router bit should be able to cut that and that, but it's not going to, you know, they're not going to fit very well because it's going to create that little radius there. So we'll go ahead and on those sharp corners, we'll just use our fillet tool for this one. Normal fillet, 16th of an inch. We'll click and create that fillet there and that fillet there. That one and that one. Up here. That one. And that one, that one, and that one. And this little guy, he's only got two pieces, so that's fine. So I've got this piece, this middle piece, and this piece for these three. And these two pieces for this one. So we've got a little uh, happy Easter puzzle. We could do, uh, let's do some text Wait, why am I doing happy Easter? Uh, <clears throat> it is four down, guys. Sorry about the audio. If it's if, uh, if it's picking up any of that audio. All right, so guys here, 
Uh, let's make that just a little bit bigger. And by putting Happy Easter in the center, I'll just clear those lined up far apart. So I'll use the Add Text Spacing and Curve tool. Uh, get those two lines and kind of Sure, it says line line. There we go. And that'll be a V car. All right, let's create some tool paths. And this first thing that I need to do on these tool paths is I need to select all the bell parts here. This. Oops. These three parts, these two parts. It would help if I trimmed that one together. Trim, trim. Get my extension out. I know what's going to happen over here. Oh, that's a trim, trim, too. See, it always surprises me. There we go. And did I do the radius on these? No, I didn't do the radius on that one either. Lord have mercy, Lenny. You're getting... That storm does have me flustered. Radius and radius. Radius and radius. Just kind of curious to see how much damage the tree that fell did. Radius and radius. All right. So with these two parts here, these two parts here, and all the male parts here, we're going to move them, move them to a new layer. I'm going to call this my bunny male part. And turn them off for a moment. All right, let's create some tool paths on this. I'd really love to get to the elephant. It's 913. We'll see what we can do. Uh, on this here, we've got a V carve tool path. We cannot do that yet. We've got to weld those together and replace them with the welded vectors. So they're all uh, there. All right, V carve tool path. This is going to be no flat depth on this. I'm going to be using a 60 degree V bit, no clearance tool. I'm going to come down here, and this is going to be my bunny. Puzzle. 60 DEG V bit calculate that reset my preview preview that selected tool path okay a little happy easter jonah or whatever you want to do cut create those so many tool All right, did I break again? It's blinking like crazy here, guys. So let's take that fillet tool as quickly as we can. This one. And that one's our biggest. Right here in the paw. I believe. I believe I'm good there. So let's create our pockets. These guys here are going to go uh, pocket. We'll cut this down um, quarter of an inch, three eight quarter, you know, whatever you want it to be. Depends on the thing. You want it, the kids to be able to get them out, you know, uh, as well. So halfway sticking up would be, you know, probably good. I'm going to pocket this with an eighth inch end mill. 
but I am going to use a larger clearance tool of a quarter inch end mill. And this is going to be my bunny pocket. Now again, what didn't I do? Create that pocket allowance. Got to give ourselves a little bit of allowance or those parts aren't going to fit together. Even though we kind of, you know, offset things 10 thousandths of an inch, we still, I'm still going to give myself an allowance. Negative allowance going over the line. I'm going to go uh, 20 thousandths of an inch. If I need to go more than I'll... I'll do that test fit and check that out. Preview that visible tool path. <clears throat> and again, guys and girls, these are just simple samples of uh, things you can let your imagination kind of run wild. And also, there's a cute little puzzle there uh, let's go into our mail parts let's select all of our mail parts i'm going to go into nesting i'll use the same nesting functions but i will let it rotate uh 10 i'm not too worried about the grain and uh preview those parts to minimize my waste And these are going to be a profile cut. Cutting a half inch deep because I'll be cutting through, you know, half inch material on that. Um, cool eighth inch end mill. And you got to use the bit that you're setting all those radiuses for and everything. So eighth inch end mill. On the outside of the line, no allowance offset, no tabs because I'm going to use two-sided tape. And there's our male parts for our little bunny. That'd actually be a little bit of a challenging puzzle for a little kid because I can't even tell which one's the head. I can see the ears. Pretty good. With those eggs thrown in there, those little Easter eggs. Like, what's what? There's the head. All right, let's see what we've got here. Let's go back and there's some chatter going on. Uh, we need a buzzer alert for Laney. Uh, yes, share the screen. I'm sorry about that, guys. Hey, Mike. You're south of me? Cool. All right. You keep coming in and out. Yeah, Paul. Uh, my my screen keeps blinking in and out. Keeps turning on and off. Uh, the actual, not the screen, the video. I, uh, I see, I mean, it's like, goes away. It's crazy. But, um, all right. The last little few minutes here i want to just because i've been you know i showed off that um i showed off the let's hit uh, cancel on that let's move this to a new layer move to a new layer we're going to call this uh bunny pocket <laughs> I'll turn that off for a moment. So I want to talk about this one here. The elephant. The elephant in the room. Now this puzzle is the pieces are kind of laid out and created, but some of the pieces are going to be changed. 
Um, what this is, is this is a series of little uh, elephant shapes. Uh, let me get his little eye in there and group him. Let's oh no, group him. Group him. G for group. I'm hitting the G for group. And what I'm doing is selecting all these little parts. Group him together and group him together. And basically, we have these little elephant shapes that uh, when they toss and turn around and get put together. Oh, let's group this one. You know, we have our silhouette or our pocket, and then these parts here are little elephants that will get flipped and spin and turned around to create that puzzle. The only thing is, is these little areas here and the eyes and all, we wouldn't cut those out. They would be, we would use a V-bit and a profile cut to create that groove, to give that simulation of that ear. We would create, you know, that little uh, V-carve cut on the eye or what have you to kind of do that little eye there. So on, on parts like this, um, basically, <clears throat> the little elephants the shapes were kind of drawn out uh and they're different you know shapes and all just creating a kind of an outline of that elephant and its trunks the trunks are kind of what really kind of hooked them together and things but these parts here that um you know were created they've got to be cut and rejoined and then the part here needs to be like a little uh it could be if it could be a single line you know with the v-bit just following that profile tool path uh to create that little groove or uh the parts could be let's go back into note editing on this one and let's pull this down down and they could be joined with a you know kind of a straight line uh so that you know that v groove cut can come in and cut that part and everything but we wouldn't create that as a puzzle piece where the end mill is trying to get up in there to cut that shape out there uh you know we're just trying to give that simulation of like an ear lobe they don't even have to be you know if you didn't want to go into that kind of detail with with a puzzle like this and you can find these puzzles and and they're You'll typically find them as scroll patterns and things like that. And when we have these type of scroll patterns, you know, we can play with them. But we also, everything we did with the, uh, the rabbit, we've got to do, you know, we've got to kind of look at how these parts fit together and how they're going to get cut out because that eighth inch in mill is not going to be able to get into this area. So all of these parts would be assembled uh, sorry, I'm in node editing. Get out of node editing. All these parts would be assembled into place. And then we would look at exactly how we need to clean them up so that they all fit together. Let's get this one into place here. Because when my end mill comes and cuts out this part, it's, it's going to create a radius here. So that's going to create a radius here. So all of these parts need to be redrawn 
we it's nice that we were able to find a shape to kind of get us you know point us in the right direction of what you know uh the piece that we're wanting to make but we technically need to redraw these um and uh you know recreate our curves and things and so let's put this back together let me regroup him back together and then we'll go through and clean up our elephant where it's going to change our shapes come uh you know And no matter what we do, we just want to make sure that the parts do fit together after everything is said and done. You know, that our router bit can cut it and uh, the, you know, they need to fit. So if you do trace scroll patterns or you find scroll patterns and things uh, to work with, then we'll do what I just did. I'm trying to size it up. There's going to be some editing. There's going to be some node editing. There's going to be some cleanup and repairs, and there's going to be some adjustments and changes. Now, as far as everything goes here, uh, my profile, the body part, that's the part that I'm going to adjust first. So I'm going to be cutting out this pocket for all of these parts to fit into. So I'm going to need to fill it based on whatever bit that I'm using. And I like using a small bit when I'm doing puzzles, but I need to go through and all of these corners and everything, I need to come through any sharp corners or anything that are on my profile. So make sure it's the profile, not the inner parts. And usually when you run your mouse along line, it'll tell you where, you know, there needs to be a radius. Fill it. And by doing that, it's going to change how our inner parts look so i've got the pocket cut done now i've got to come in and adjust you know the inner parts so they fit and you know my inner parts i'm trying to look at the fillet tool and it's like nope that's not working you know that's not working that type of thing and all so it just means i just need to go through and do some node editing and uh, clean up so the first thing i want to clean up on this Mike or Paul, am I still coming in and out? I saw someone commented about in and out. Am I still coming in and out uh, as far as volume and all? Could be me going away from the microphone when I'm talking. <clears throat> okay. All right. So don't try to do everything at once. Pick a part. Work with it. So here, I've already cut these two pieces apart here. And the thing I'd like is, you know, I want to make sure that the pieces fit in. Now, this is a very loose fitting puzzle. Um, for the most part, it's a, it's a kid's puzzle. So there's a lot of slack and everything in here. But still, at the same you know time, I'd like it to, you know, somewhat flow. And so we'll go into node editing and ungroup this part. And right here, this big sweep, I'm just going to find my relative anchor on him. Let's see which one he, that's not the relative anchor. Where is he? He's right there. He's hiding. And I'm going to adjust that. Accordingly, 
because I just want to make sure that when my router bit cuts out that male part that I get that nice sweep. I don't got to have any sharp corners. Now my router bit's going to be able to cut this just fine. And let's get this guy where he actually belongs. Hold down that control key and out of selection mode. <clears throat> And again, it's a very loose fitting puzzle. It's a puzzle. All right, so on him. I need to change this. I'm going to grab my fillet tool and fillet him out. Fillet him out. Create that little indention. And I just need to make sure, you know, like when I'm, you know, going over a part, if it's not going to let me fillet it, then I've got to node edit it. And I'm not ready to move on to the next part yet. I'm just working my way around. And if you want these pieces to fit tightly together, then basically what you do is you get rid of, you know, make a copy, whatever, but you redraw a center line. Kind of trace a center line. It's a, more of an offset. And that's uh, tedious. Let's see here. Let's go into node editing. And... Pull this back in. All right, so these guys here, they're going to come down. Actually going to delete those points, hit the letter D. We'll get rid of those points there. I should be able to take my fillet tool on him. Round him off, him off, and him off. This cut coming out of here, not a big deal. Not going to hurt it whatsoever because it's gonna, it can be nice and sharp. It's not fitting into anything else. It's just coming here. So, and my router bit can do that outside cut. It's more the inside cut. These are profile cuts on the outside of the part so it's the inside corners that we really have to kind of tend to so i don't need to change anything with that but i do want to kind of uh get out of node edit or get into node editing and would kind of like to hold down that control key and micro move into there a little bit more. And delete that point there. See that point. Is that a point? And all I'm doing is going to go through around and adjust this till I get a nice looking part. Cut the ears separate. That's going to be, you know a v carve just to create that groove and that little v carve cut in the eye just to create that little eye so it kind of looks you know like an eye but we're not gonna it's not a puzzle piece we're not gonna do an inlay and little little bitty pieces for kids to swallow that type of thing 
all right so with that one fairly uh done now i'm going to move on to the next one and the next one and the next one and again it's a matter of in this case with this scroll pattern uh i need to cut the vector cut the vector I'll come right in here somewhere and cut it here as well. And with that, I should be able to select this here and join with a smooth curve or a straight line, not a smooth curve. I'll just uh, join it with a straight line. Straight up. Uh, this part here will get cut off. This part here will get removed. And then I'll join this with a smooth curve. Create that around. And just looking for anything with sharp points. And that fillet tool will help me. I don't, oh, I didn't need to do that. I said I didn't need to do him. Okay. So with that one done, and then it's just a matter of moving on and on and on. This guy here, cut the ear off. <laughs> cut the vector. Here and here. I'm going to back that off just a little bit. I'm going to delete join with a smooth curve or let's do a straight line. Get rid of that. Join this with a smooth curve. Break out the fillet tool. And I'll go back and, you know, if there are any places that just are really obnoxiously not the right shape, I'll go back and node edit it. Okay. So he's done. So that leaves two more parts and that's it. Up to this point, guys and girls, we're going to be wrapping up here in the next uh, 15 minutes. I just wanted to show you some of these things. I'll carve some of these out and show uh, samples. We'll, we'll make one of these. <clears throat> and I'll show samples. We'll do a show and tell next week. Let's see. He's done, so that leaves this guy. Now, again, on this one, I don't need to fill at this point here because my bit can do that outside cut, and it's not fitting into another piece. So I can, I'm fine with that, you know, that point there. Uh, what I can't do is I need to cut the vector. And then I can come in and delete that, delete that, join that together with a straight line is fine, join with a smooth curve to create that part. 
I'll check my fillet there. Smoothing out these corners. Let's come down here. And again, I'd probably spend a little few extra minutes on this, uh, getting things kind of where it's nice and snug. But this is designed to be a little kid's puzzle where the pieces just kind of drop in. This is the one, this is where I need to make a big change. <clears throat> All right, so my outside piece, got to come in here. And it, um, let's delete that point, delete that point, and then kind of redraw that. Let's pull this part up. I'm going to Use my arrow keys, kind of pull myself in. All right, so my eighth inch bit, and you can always check with your, you know, uh, bit too. Make sure it's going to fit. It's not. So let's open that up. Don't do that. All right. Oh, so close. All right, and then on the outside cut, not really worried about that. It's more for this one. Ah. It's more right here.
Okay. And we would keep going around. This is definitely going to have to be changed here. Let's try our fillet tool. Let's see if our fillet tool can help us out on any of these parts. Do it there and there. Nothing here. Get that. And get that. This is an outside cut. I'm not worried about that. That's going to be fine. We'll go ahead and bring that one in. Go through and once we have those parts now to keep things consistent i'm going to still uh i'm going to hold down a control key and i'm going to still a little eyeball there and throw it into this guy he didn't have one he was he was blind um with that these parts can now get grouped together We'll group him. Select this and this and that and group him. And again, this is just a drop in little puzzle part for kids. It was a part with where it needed to be an inlay, more precision and all, then we would we'd be spending a few bits of time on this. Group. I'm hitting the letter G on the keyboard to group these items together. And last but not least. And with that those are going to get moved to a new layer. I'm going to create our pocket cut tool path. Thank you, Rodney. Uh, again, we're going to cut only a, a quarter of an inch deep. I'm going to use a larger area clearance tool as well. I'm going to give myself an, uh, now this one's kind of sloppy. It doesn't need an allowance. So no allowance on this pocket. It was already designed. It was done that way by design. So our eighth inch end mill uh, is doing that. And then our quarter inch end mill is going to do the large area. Oops. All right, everything looks good there. We could engrave uh, Jimmy or Johnny or Janet's name there on the, on the piece, whatever the case may be. Uh, let's go into our male parts here. And let's nest them.
All right, now this one, based on my parameters and everything, all the parts will not fit out of this one small piece. So it's created a second sheet for these two parts. Let's see if we can uh, circumvent that some. Let's get rid of the border gap. We'll minimize it, to, uh, we'll decrease that a bit. We'll let it increment in five degree increments. Uh, the clearance, I'm using double-sided tape so I can minimize my clearance quite a bit. Let's go uh, 30 second. Not using tabs. Let's preview that. And there we go. So all the parts will fit on that one piece. And these would be... <clears throat> All right, so let me show you how this would look. First of all, we would take and ungroup everything here. U for ungroup. Oops, don't do that. Make sure you're in the right layer when you're working and everything. Okay, now I'm going to ungroup. Well, son of a gun. Now that I've done that, now I've got to do it a little differently. I'm going to right click and ungroup onto the grouped layer groups layers there you go <laughs> all right so if we select these guys right here all the little ears and eyes it's going to be a v-carve toolpath now i'm going to want it to go a little bit deep so uh i'm going to give it about a twenty thousand seven inch start depth um 60 degree v bit no clearance tool of course uh we'll calculate this reset that preview preview the visible tool pass and that's going to create these little grooves and eyes we can go a little bit deeper go a little bit deeper give it a little bit more of a start depth go get a little definition in there <clears throat> and then our profile cuts could i get him down here on his v car no i didn't let me open up that v car real quick and go back and grab him oh oh Everybody selected this time. All right, calculate that out. <clears throat> On the mail parts, let's get the profile. Profile toolpath, cutting all the way through the material. In this case, I'll use a half inch material, same as always. Um, no allowance, none of that stuff is required here. You can calculate that. Preview that uh, visible toolpath. Get rid of our waste here. Got our little, all of our little pieces and all. Again, sanding and smoothing the edges and everything so it's uh, <coughs> kid friendly. And we got a nice little cool little elephant puzzle. And again, you can make this to fit real tight and everything, but this is, it's a semi loose. I mean, there's not a whole lot of gap or space in between them, but there is some. Uh, so the parts just kind of drop in and all great for, you know, kids of different ages and all. And just like with this, I mean, there are so many different things. You know, I've got a squirrel here that could have been broken up. We got a giraffe. Not a giraffe. <laughs> yeah, we have a double hump giraffe. Uh, no, we got a camel. Uh, the teddy bear would be a fun one. Uh, the teddy bear basically is a profile cut. And then all of these little pieces here are, uh, you know, could be uh, dropped in. Of course, on the head here, there'd be some pocket cuts 
for the little pieces to fall in. Or these would be V carved to create the eyelashes and the eyes. We could even draw little pupils in there and V carve those. V carve that mouth, that wouldn't be a part. But the nose, we could drop in a little button nose. Uh, so this part would have a hole cut in as well for the nose to drop in. And, you know, you could have some fun. And these could just be just drop in pieces. They don't have to all link and lock together because they're going to be in a pocket and everything. So what I'm going to do uh, for you all is I'm going to uh, create uh, some of these puzzles uh, and, and, you know, get, uh, you know, see, I'll probably try to do all of them and I will create them on different layers. So you'll have the uh, male and female parts for the each of them. And I'll create the tool pass and label them all and I'll make this file available to you for download. and the, um, that you can play with and they're just fun little simple simple projects the uh our little shape piece our little uh game board edge round over our mail part puzzle piece let's see here mail part puzzle piece game board simple puzzle uh shape puzzle simple puzzle and the pocket cut and the round over just those four if we were to look at that, those four, the pocket cut, where's my pocket at? Right here. The pocket cuts are the only thing that take the longest. Uh, the mail shapes about 11 minutes to cut out. The uh, pocket, 12 minutes. The, and that's that eighth of an inch pocket, you know, going down. The game board pieces, uh, about a minute to do the round over on the edges. So in about an hour, you could knock that out. And an hour of your time is quite a few hours of kids fun entertainment. Let you watch your stories while they're playing with their puzzle. <laughs> right. Isn't that worth an hour? Um, but, uh, you know, the little elephant. Let's see here. Let's turn all these off. The elephant mail, the V carve, the pocket cut, and the clearing. We're at 49 minutes, 21 minutes for the big clearing, uh, six minutes for the little eighth of an inch to clean up the edges, 57 seconds to V carve the little grooves, and 20 minutes to profile cut everything out. And that's based on my eighth inch end mill with my pass depth of a sixteenth of an inch per pass. I mean, they could be knocked out, you know, probably quicker than that. But I'm I'm conservative with cutting and everything. And, uh, you know, again, fun times, fun times. So, literally, these vectors are silhouettes, trace silhouettes. And then from there, it's a matter of just going through, figuring out where you want the shapes to be, how you want them interlocking, if they're going to interlock, or if they're just going to drop into a pocket and all. And uh, you can really create some fun kids' toys. Uh, this could be text and letters. Uh, it could be their names, you know, uh, Hope or Joy or Juliet or Jim or James, whatever the case may be. Um, and uh, to where they their letters or each of their name letters are cut out and uh, they got to spell their name and all. Great, uh, you know, educational and fun. And again, I just wanted to kind of play around with some kids puzzles with you. Uh, like I said, I haven't carved many of them, but you know, it's really straightforward. So hopefully you pick something up in this and um, it wasn't too, too god awful or boring for you. Be sure to join us. Be sure to join us uh, tomorrow night, Burl and I, Tuesday or Wednesday night at 7 p.m. at the digitalwoodcarver.com channel on YouTube um, and uh, also the Digital Woodcarver Facebook page. Check us out. We're going to be talking about and showing off the 2440 and its accessories. And Mike, you ask me that every week, but as soon as I have the announcement, I will be releasing that announcement to everybody on the SSL certificate because that is the one thing that I'm cringing on is getting that site up. I'm waiting on it um, <clears throat> to get finished. I've got my artists ready to uh, create the project galleries and everything. So 
As soon as I get it, that will be the first announcement I make, Mike, because I'll be jumping for joy because right now it's becoming a pain in the ass. It's not worth the uh, $500, 300 to $500 a year that for what I'm having to go through to just get it and everything and write it and make sure it uh, locks up. And I'm doing that and I'm just, it's a cover my ass kind of thing. You know, we're dealing with people's purchases and credit cards and all that. Uh, Two million dollar insurance policy. So uh, when it's right, it's right. And I will let you know as soon as possible for sure. Um, all right. Well, hopefully you were able to pick up something on this and uh, have some fun with it. Play around, use your imagination, create some different shapes of different animals. Uh, you know, um, all kinds of things that you can do. This is just. Uh, uh, just on the this is just the basics you know basic simple stuff that's fun to do and good for kids and all we got kids we can give toys to give them something to do now uh sorry about the audio in the video uh like i said we have a storm over here uh high winds and uh tree fell so uh not sure what it knocked out or what it hit when it fell but it sure did black out things for a minute or two or a second or, you know it might have seemed like minutes but it might have only been a few seconds but I uh, apologize about that, Mother Nature. All right, everybody. I want to thank you for hanging out with me this Tuesday night. Uh, next week, we're going to try to do some, uh, you know, some fun stuff uh, that's nice. Uh, you know, let's let's make some furniture or something. Uh, do something that's creative, that's, work, you know, challenging. A little bit challenging. Not, not over your head, advanced challenging, but challenging that is, you know, uh, today was a simple class, very simple basics. We're going to step it up next week. And until then, thanks for joining me. I'll see you soon. Have a great night.